With February currently upon us, love is in the air. Well, actually, it's snowing while I write this, but you could probably compare the two. They're pretty, romanticized, goes away rather quickly, and if it doesn't, it can be dangerous. This metaphor got away from me. The general gist is that it's the month of love, and I could do a webtoon per week kind of situation, where I talk about specific couples each week, which is actually a good idea that I might do next year. But I decided to take a step back and talk about love itself. Now, I've barely experienced love, and I'm clearly a little cynical about it. However, love doesn't necessarily entail romance. So this month, we'll be talking about all types of love. And we're starting with the love I dearly hope you've all experienced. Familial love. Now, when I say familial love, I mean family love, but also the love in friendships. I think it's important to discuss these roles first as they're often extremely important to, well, life, but often in media are shafted in order to show the beauty of romance. Don't get me wrong, they show it sometimes, but I can't really think of ones that do it enough or good enough for me to mention. But webtoon series often do promote families and friendships, both the good and the bad. So, I'm going to look through a bunch of different webtoon series. Check the ones I'm going to spoil in the description below. And take a look at why the relationships between family and friends are written the way they are and what they're trying to teach us. First, let's take a look at Cursed Princess Club. Cursed Princess Club is an interesting take on the stereotypical princess love stories. We can talk about the titular Cursed Princess Club and their members, but I'll save their stories for another time. Instead, let's take a look at our main character and her family. We see that our main character's sisters are portrayed as Disney Princesses TM. The oldest sister, Maria, has a large gathering of animals assisting her mourning, brushing, braiding, and tying her hair without even asking her. Meanwhile, the second oldest sister has randomly large flowers growing out of nowhere. We also get to see their brother, someone who looks like a princess so much that he gets confused for a princess, also actually just straight up glitters. Meanwhile, our main character Gwen is... well, not. In a world where they're all normal standard humans, Gwen has both green hair and green skin. Sharp teeth, more ragged hair, and a lack of anime eyes. Meanwhile, she does have critters that help her get ready, but they're critters like possums and rats, and is literally mistaken for a witch by another witch. The point of the webtoon is to contrast Gwen with not only the stereotypical idea of a beautiful princess, but to contrast her with her siblings people who are deemed very conventionally beautiful. And, if it was any other type of media, Gwen would likely be treated very poorly by her family. The idea of the less conventionally beautiful sibling would make her an outcast in her own family. And she would end up with the main handsome prince or whatever. But the Cursed Princess Club doesn't tell that story. It would have been very easy to tell it, but instead they push a different story. A story on how good families should love each other. Gwen is treated exactly the same in her family. Her siblings and father don't treat her differently because she isn't conventionally pretty. She's treated like a good person because she's a good person. She's caring, helpful, crafty, a baker, and honest. Not to mention her siblings truly believe her to be just as beautiful as they are, and are willing to support her no matter what. Her siblings are as loving as Gwen herself, not to mention her brother is also very willing to protect Gwen. The same can be said for her father, but to the point of an extreme. Her father is loving, but like, too much loving. To the point where it's overbearing, telling her daughters that boys are wolves and didn't let any males, including the guards at the castle, 
look directly at the princesses. We see both sides of a loving family. How siblings love each other to a fault, so much so that they support and protect each other no matter what. Meanwhile, we see too much, we see what happens with too much love. How it borders on helicopter parenting. But speaking of helicopter parenting, let's talk about the ultimate helicopter parent in Lore Olympus. I thought I was going to save Lore Olympus for next week when I talked about romantic love. However, that's the greatest part about these webtoon series. They contain multitudes. Lore Olympus has some fun family issues. Unlike Cursed Princess Club showing how loving a family could be, Lore Olympus shows the opposite. How often families can be the bane of some people's existence. For example, our main characters Hades and Persephone. Let's talk about Hades' family. To say that Greek gods have a complicated background would be an understatement. Even in the world of Lore Olympus, which, while takes a lot from Greek mythology, changes a lot of things up as well. But one thing they didn't change was Hades' father, Kronos. Kronos was the king of titans, basically the ruler of the world. In the original tale, Kronos hears a prophecy that his children would reign his end. However, in Lore Olympus, he simply didn't want his children. So, he did the only logical thing a parent can do, and trapped his children in his stomach by eating them. Huh. It's whatever. We later learn that the scars from some of the original gods are from Kronos. As while Hades was being freed, Kronos didn't let him go without some injuries. For 13 years, Hades was trapped. Literally trapped in the stomach of his father. Which led to his trauma. And Hades isn't alone. Our other main character, Persephone, had a strangely similar experience. No, her mother Demeter didn't eat her and literally trap her in her stomach. But that's a high bar to match. Instead, Persephone is metaphorically trapped by her mother. Her mother expects perfection. She expects a lot from her daughter. And that's not necessarily a problem. Because parents want to expect a lot from their children, and that does make some sense. But the problem is to the degree Demeter goes to push her expectations on her daughter. To the point where it's suffocating. So much so that she's constantly having dreams where she's trapped in a greenhouse. Something that looks appealing and something that even seems like a gift, but to her, it's a prison. Both Hades and Persephone are trapped by their parents. And while Kronos didn't do it out of love for his children, it's very likely that Demeter did. She wanted her daughter to be the best she can be but doesn't know how awful it is for her. Luckily, Lore Olympus shows us how families aren't the only place you can get that familial love that I talked about. As we see our main characters seek comfort with their co-workers and their friends. We see Hades and Hecate, Hecate, Hecate are practically siblings without being actual family. Meanwhile, Persephone connects more with her friends than with her mom. As Artemis gave her a chance to be free, meanwhile Eros was the first person Persephone tells about Apollo. Persephone treats her friends closer than she treats her family. But like all relationships, there will always be toxic ones. As staying in this series, we see the main trio of Theseus, Minthi, and Thanatos. We hear that Theseus is the one who actually found Minthi and taught her to be the way she is. Not to mention Thanatos is actually a cool person that I really like, but because of his bad company, becomes worse because of it. And it's not like Thanatos is alone there. We see that who you choose to be friends with can change who you are. Let's take a look at a webtoon series I've never talked about before. Oh my god, how do you pronounce this? It doesn't matter. This webtoon original follows Ji Wu. Oh my goodness, I am terrible with names. And awakens, basically a superhero, with his mentor Kaden, an ultra powerful electric awakened in the body of a chubby cat. 
One of our main characters is Jisuk, I believe. Introduced as sort of a school bully, as his friends are constantly picking on others, like our two main characters, Jiwoo and Wooin. Wooin? Wooin. Jisuk isn't a, a great person. He's hot-headed, arrogant, and incredibly rude, and often hurtful. And his friends don't help his personality, as they use him for his name, money, status, and power. It's not a great friendship as they feed into each other's worst impulses, like the friendship in Lore Olympus. And while you could push this onto his personality, which isn't great, we can compare this to when he becomes friends with our other two main characters. Unlike his typical actions, he goes and does things that are seemingly pretty cool. Feeding cats, having sleepovers, randomly riding around in shopping carts, he has fun with people who are good and because of it does better things. He doesn't bully as much and when he does he only picks on people who deserve it. What is the point I'm trying to make here? You're gonna see a lot of dumb romantic love things this time of year. And it might not feel great or necessary. As maybe you aren't dating or maybe you find love stupid. But you should know that love doesn't necessarily need to be romantic. There are many types of love. Never forget your families, the people you're born with, and the people you choose to be with. These relationships are often the most vital in our lives. They're the ones that can keep us sane in, crazy example here, a pandemic where everyone is forced to stay inside. But they can also imprison us or make us worse off. These webtoon series show us the importance of familial love, something that isn't shown to us that often in media. It's great that they show it, because they show the positives and the downsides. Not everyone has fantastic family members or siblings, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're without familial love. You can go out, get friends that can boost you up, support you just as much as family can. And it's the other way around. You might choose to be close with people who make you worse off. People who you thought were fun and entertaining at first just make you a bad person. The point is that there's a lot of love to be had in the world, and only focusing on the romance of it is a problematic situation. And I'm glad that webtoon series and webtoon authors can focus on something else for a change. But that's just my opinion. Which families and friends did I miss that you think should be on this list? What are your favorite friendships in webtoons? Or your favorite families? Leave it in the comments below. But, like always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next week.